The, the violin is, is, a, is the most unnatural instrument because we have to go from this natural position of the hands to this. This, 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 this. Can you imagine? Oh, I've been doing this since I was seven years old, twisting my arm. It hurts. Usually children get tremendous pains immediately, so you have to do it very slowly, very slowly, and teach them to really bring this natural position to this unnatural position, and then you have to hold it. Look what I have here, this stupid mark. I, all my life I've had to squeeze and have pains in my shoulder and my back. We all have tremendous pains in, my, in the shoulders, the back. So you, you have to, to learn to play properly. If you learn to play properly, then it's easier. Uh, and and you, you have to fix the motor that goes into the car. I don't care. And then if you, if you have the motor, then you can play French. You can put it in a French car, you can put it in Swiss cars, you can put it in German cars, in anything. But to learn properly music, you have to learn to play German music because that's what we play. That's the essence of 300 years of music comes from Deutschland. Six. This is deeper. It's darker. It's it's more. It's got more overtones. The one player before me was Sam Duskin. Sam Duskin played before me. He owned the violin. Before that, it was a, a Frenchman and Englishman owned it. I think I'm the fourth owner. The viola I play is uh, the grandfather and the father. The top is, is Filius. The bottom is Andrea. So it's his grandfather, Del Jesus' grandfather and father. Andrea Guarneri Filius was. Andrea's son, and then came Del Gizu. So I get, the, I get that. Yeah, I have the whole family. I have dinner with them every day. the other way. The tiger stripes, usually it's this way, if you're looking at the violin, and this one is backwards, well, seemingly backwards. So Guarneri just said, no, no, I'll do it this way. He didn't turn it around, because it was a block of wood. So he saw it, and he thought, well, it's better this way. Also, the front has wonderful watermarks um, that very few instruments have. From, from the wood, just natural wood. The water just goes, seeps into it, and that came out in the varnish.
was heavier than I'm now. I had a, I was a little fatter. And Gingold, Joe Gingold, studied with him, and he said that I, I remind him so much of his eye. And um, so he said that you should also play the viola because he played the viola. And then I started to conduct. He also got a conductor. He was a terrific conductor. And I'm also born on the same day he was born, 16th of July. So maybe I'm a reincarnation of his eye. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. But if I am, I am very grateful because he was a fantastic master. Frank is a piece that anyone who plays this repertoire must face playing for your life. It's a life sentence. You play it, if not every year, every other year, or sometimes five times a year, or sometimes 10 times a year. But you always come back and play it again. We've played it maybe a hundred times, maybe more, maybe a bit less, but certainly a great number of times. I enjoy playing it now very much. Uh, but I, for a long time I didn't. For a long time I, I Also, I didn't have the right pianist. That piece requires a very, very good pianist. The second movement is, I think, very difficult for the piano. Uh, because the repeated notes and it sits wrong way and if you have a good pianist then then it's wonderful but Mark he's played it all his life since he was a child with his father he played all the time so he knows that piece backwards and forwards so it was uh, it was easy for us to, to play that it was just simple violin, I'm very fortunate because the best possible sound or playing that I can imagine happens to be a real person, and that's my friend and partner, Pinka Zuckerman. Therefore, any piece that I write which has a violin in it is written for that sound, for that person, for that musician. He is very, uh, very strong inside. In a sense, complete. He's arrived at a point where he is feeling good about what he does and secure about what he's doing. And in a way, I feel the same way. So. That doesn't mean we stop learning or, or going further, but we are very much in the same kind of position in life now. Um, and, and maybe it's just time, just living, just year after year after year. Um, you get to a point where you feel good about what you're doing.
life experiences that we have had together will probably show up someplace. Maybe it's a B flat, you know, high B flat somewhere. You say, you remember we were in such and such place 19 years ago, 22 years ago in Scotland, we had a beer. Well, there's a high B flat. Okay, <laughs> you know what? Uh, maybe. So next year we're playing, we're gonna be playing 20 years together, Mark and I. 20 years, imagine. All these white hairs are because of him. <laughs> Such a fast life. We have fixed. We want fast, fast fixes. You know, we want CNN news all the time. Um, music is not like that. Music is a very personal experience. And I say, look, come and listen, and don't make up your mind. Just come and sit there. If you want to leave after five minutes, go ahead, leave. But you won't. Because that's real. That's real. It's not television. It's not movies, it's not computers, it's nature. D major, A major, G major, B flat major, D minor, C minor, that's real. And there is no explanation for that. There shouldn't be an explanation for that. The music is already explained. We, we have enough written down. There's plenty of explanation. There are road signs everywhere. But you have to give the person first the idea of what it's about. We played a piece uh, uh, by Takemitsu, Toro Takemitsu, an early piece he wrote for violin and piano. A few years ago, uh, Mark and I played, and, and then uh, in concerts here in America we played. And then we went to Japan, and we invited him to the concert to come and hear it. But we, before we played the concert, I said, please, could you come and hear us a rehearsal? Just hear a rehearsal. And he came to the rehearsal, and I really tried to, to play everything was in the music. After playing it, quite a few concerts, knowing the music very well, I tried to really play because he puts a lot of indication. And I finished the piece, I didn't like what I did. And I said, Toro, I, I, that wasn't good. He said, don't worry. He, said, he came to me, he said, don't worry about what I put in the music, play what you feel. <laughs> you know? So I said, yeah, well, that's what I've been doing. But because you were here, I wanted to show you that I know the music. So I tried to do everything. He said, no, 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 no. Only he said, homage to Berg, that's all. I said, yeah, of course, because it's in the music. He said, that's all you have to think about. <laughs> so I thought, ah, okay, you know, composers, what do they know? They don't know anything, you know? They just write the music, <laughs> they, they write the notes, and, and then they say, oh, I play. And they give you all these indications, and if you do the indications, they say, no, I, I, I really didn't think, of, you know, I don't think that's good. No, no, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> do what you want. <laughs> so it's very funny. I always wonder how a composer like Mark can sit down and start on an empty page. Of course he says it's not an empty page. Mark always says, you know, I have it in here already. But still, it's an empty page. You know, there are only little lines there. And I say, gee. And then he, after two, two weeks or three weeks, there's a little first movement here, and then the second movement is over there, and then another movement is over here, and somehow it'll come together. And he, and it's amazing. I mean, I just don't know how to do that. I'm very German in my upbringing. Germanic music is my, my life. Um, I speak the language also, which helps. French, I could never do that. You know, I just can't do it, it's not me. It's a, it's a mask. So I feel that there is a mask there, a nice mask, it's beautiful. It smells sometimes very nice too. Uh, so it's more colors, uh, colors and atmosphere because of the colors. And it creates a feeling of, very nice feeling. The 
kind of it's a nice feeling.
I so many colors all, all the time. I think of yellows and greens and browns and oh, lots of different. But brown is, you know, brown. Brown. Let's say uh, if you take a, a terracotta color, terracotta is so many colors. It's not just, we think of earth color as terracotta, but terracotta is, is, you have a little red and then you have a little less red and you have a little orange and there's so much in there. Terracotta is such an incredible color, like a, like a great phrase, a great sentence. Um, these are all parts of what make music. In Santa Fe, you can sit sometimes for two hours and watch a sunset, two hours because it changes, and those changes is what a whole symphony can be. You can feel one way at 8 o'clock, and you hear an hour of music, and you feel very different at that, at the end of it, totally different, or maybe the same, or a little bit different, or angry, or happy, or the opposite of what you walked in sometimes. And that's what music does to me. Thank you. 